So apparently gamers like the single player experience more than they like the live service experience. They did a study back in 2023 to 2024, and it's really interesting some of the data, but does that spell doom and gloom for the live service? Well, I don't think so. Let's get into it and talk about it because with all of the stuff going on right now in the discourse around, obviously, the Halo stuff and 343 rebranding and all that and a bunch of other things, I felt like this would be a fun topic to cover because, well, you need to be a little, uh, you need some levity once in a while. I can't words. Words are hard for rednecks, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into this. We'll go through this really, really quickly because I don't want to have the article up on screen the whole time. We'll just, I'll just give you the cliff notes from it. But this is from The Gamer. All right. Now, it's from The Gamer. Now, it's from The Gamer because about 17 other places wrote this exact same thing two days ago. But The Gamer didn't want my email address or my credit card information to read the article so that's why we're over here all right so the key takeaway is that they say most gamers prefer single player games according to a study okay you can see the key takeaways right here and it is saying that 53 percent of gamers prefer to play single player games according to a new study the research also shows that older age groups starting at the age of 25 are more likely to prefer the single player titles with younger gamers valuing multiplayer. That's a really interesting point. Let's cover all these real quick and then we'll just go back through them here in a minute. So here is the chart right here. And as from basically, they use PVP, couch co-op, online PVP and single player. Notice that like mobile gaming isn't in here. So when we're talking about gamers, they specifically exclude the largest portion of people who are playing technically games because i mean you could call like tabletop gamers you could call uh you you could call people who play uh, a, a solitaire gamer right i mean but here they're specifically referencing what would be considered like the pc console players right so that's an interesting point here and in all of that you start to see that the single player experience is definitely on the low end when you're at a younger age and have more time to be more socially active with your friends and things like that. But right here, it starts to tip. And by the time you start to get to the older gamer, the, the elder gamers, as it were, uh, the elder gamers really love the single player experience. In fact, I actually still love the uh, single player experience myself, uh, but I'm not an elder gamer. I was only born in the 90s, ladies and gentlemen. So the elder gamers love the single player experience. However, scrolling down a little bit further, one of the things that we see is that oh goodness lord where is it all right from here single player becomes the winner and the margin between pvp only continue just to grow they cover data from a bunch of different places um all right and it says here single player game enthusiasts will likely find this news quite vindicating do you are you vindicated should I play that song and not get copyright stricken? Do you, oh God, I flashbacks from middle school. Uh, given that for several years now, publishers have seemed more enthusiastic about launching live services uh, than offline games. In the past decade, in particular, developers previously <clears throat> known almost exclusively for single player games have drifted to live services, including Bioware and so on and so forth, right? They give a few more, but where was it? All right, uh, despite single, player games being more popular media notes that the micro transactions in live services are still where the real money is in the gaming industry and remember the micro transactions of the live service and the live service multiplayer are specifically liked by people who are under the age of 25 so let's get into why this is so fun because I love talking about stuff like this. It's great. If you guys like it too, comment down below and uh, let me know what your thoughts are. So live service games have been getting absolutely thrashed lately. Everybody's trying to come out with a new live service to compete with Fortnite because they think that they can be Fortnite. Fortnite was lightning in a bottle and you just can't capture lightning twice because it never strikes in the same place twice. All right, other games. I mean, similar to, so you could somewhat call Destiny and Destiny 2 a live service, although it's kind of MMO light. It, it, Destiny 2 is just weird. It's just does this weird thing and, and that's even on the... That's even on the edges right now. I haven't played Destiny 2 in quite a while, although that being said, my wife and my friends still play the heck out of it. But what's so interesting here 
is that the younger gamers really like that multiplayer element, right? Especially in the live service arena. So basically what that tells me is younger gamers where their friends don't have jobs, things like that, they have more free time are going into these games. And even more so younger gamers, who's probably like when we're, let's talk about like teenage players, right? Like, you know, 13 to 16, 13 to 18, their parents are probably funding a lot of those microtransactions which is one and two younger gamers who are out on their own from the ages of like 18 to 24 tend to be economically more reckless so these are people who yeah they're making money but maybe not making enough money or they are making money and they are just spending it like crazy how many people in this audience when you were younger made financially dumb decisions right right and then one day you woke up and you were like oh hey maybe maybe i shouldn't do that so it's interesting the industry kind of admits here that younger gamers are fast and loose with their cash and the microtransactions are where it's at or in some instances like i say parents are probably funding it on the younger side of the players in the teenage range parents are probably swiping their credit cards or 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 get the turning their allowance into a digital thing that the kids can just go spend money on so that was one thing that i thought was really interesting now the single player experience itself speaks to me in two different ways the single player experience being popular with gamers who are 25 and up so one you're becoming more financially stable you're starting to realize maybe i shouldn't be spending my money on dumb stuff all the time whether that's fast food or coffee or whatever other thing you're going to do and instead of spending all this money on a live service game people it would seem are preferring to hit that one-time payment where it's 60 bucks and you can get some cases hundreds of hours out of a game i mean i know i spent 30 bucks on pal world and i've got like 150 hours and i've got over 200 hours in ghost of tsushima uh and then outside of that i play i fire up the og xbox and i'm trying to beat need for speed underground again and as an adult, that's hard because Need for Speed Underground was hard, still is. Anyway, I digress. That's just kind of how I do it. But it's really interesting to see as the demographics grow older, they start to become more financially responsible. I love this point. I don't think that the single player experience in many cases is necessarily better than the live service but this does speak to it providing more value than the live services right when people start to say i really want to make sure that what i have i keep that and it's not just an endless money pit they're going for the single player games now again they didn't get into the mobile side of this right here which if you want to talk about trans microtransactions and mobile that's a whole other topic but the other side of this too is as we get older we have less and less time to hang out with our friends right it's just a thing i know me and the boys we used to set aside a certain day every day of the week because all of our schedules were kind of the same well as all of us have taken different career paths dude we don't have the same schedules we just don't and so playing with the boys on even on the weekends is kind of tough because somebody's got to work or somebody's out of town or we've got family obligations that we have to go to birthday parties and all this other stuff and so that would seem that when you get the gamers that are like man i still love playing games but i can't play games with the boys so another thing is like well there's no point in playing this live service multiplayer thing if i'm not gonna be chilling with my guys so I'm just going to get a game that I can sit down, crack a beer to, and have a good time doing that. <clears throat> Ultimately, I think that this is not spelling doom and gloom for the live service model. Um, I think that there are going to be a few of them that are going to survive that have been around for a while. I think that we might get uh, another one or two or three or four or a, every so many years that become very, very popular, work very, very well, keep that engaged audience a lot. It probably speaks to why Helldivers 2 kind of fell out of favor because I haven't looked into the demographics of that, but if I had to guess, I would say Helldivers 2 probably more towards that older audience of gamer right my guess would be demographically at probably 25 to 34 years old is where those gamers would have been whereas fortnite players and other players like minecraft well minecraft's not really a live service uh I'm trying to think of other uh uh live service games that like my kids would play but let's stay with fortnite you're definitely going for that younger audience right that audience that has that time to dedicate to that one game forever and for always and hang out with their brothers and sisters or their friends or whatever 
Although I will say this. I will say this. The one thing that made me kind of happy to see, and it only goes down a little bit, but this should give us all hope, ladies and gentlemen, is that through all of these, Couch Co-op, Couch Co-op doesn't go down a whole lot until you get to until you get up here to 45 and 54. Those guys didn't have like couch co-op. But yeah, there's a seven point swing to the 35 year olds. But that's something that tells me that couch co-op, people still love it. And that's something that tells me that, you know, Halo Infinite failed because they didn't give us couch co-op. You don't release a Halo game without couch co-op. More couch co-op needed, please. In fact, it's one of the funnest things to do. Mario Party on the Nintendo Switch with all of us in the room. Oh, it's a blast. So moral of the story, guys, get your friends over, fire up a game that's got some couch co-op and have some fun with it. And what do you guys, what does this whole thing tell you? What does this study tell you about gamers, trends in the industry, where everything is going to go? Do you think this is gonna spell doom for live service games i mean we were told single player games were on their way out years ago but yet it seems a lot of really good single player games are coming out lately and i'm having a blast just got space marines 2 downloaded and i'm gonna work my way through that probably after dragon age origins or when the boys are ready because that's got online co-op but anyway guys let me know what you think about this it's a very light-hearted episode today i can get into some more of the serious gaming news later but i just saw this and i was like you know what i want to have a fun conversation Keep it apolitical. Stay away from all that stuff that we're just inundated with. And as always, thank you guys so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. If you want to see what else I have to say on some other topics, there's some videos popping up on the screen right about now. And as always, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, cheers, everybody.